our prophecy travel sector. Let's look at how to eliminate intra-group transactions that have occurred during previous period relating to depreciable non-current assets. When it comes to intra-group transactions and if that asset has been sold but again the selling entity makes a gain and the receiving entity records that asset at a value that includes the gain. In relation to the group, the gain of the selling entity is an unrealized gain and the overvalued amount of the recipient entity is an overvalued amount that has to be eliminated. When we eliminate the gain and the overvaluation in consolidated entity that gives rise to a taxation of deferred tax asset and the income taxes but that relates to the previous period. On 1st of July 2018, subsidiary sold a machinery for $20 million. Cost of the machinery was $23 million and the accumulated depreciation was $7 million. So the carrying value of this asset is $16 million. The income tax rate is 30% and the depreciation rate applied to machinery in the group is 10% per reporting period on straight line basis. We're going to look at the consolidation entries that we need to do two years after the transaction. So in this instance, it is 30th of June, 2020. So there's a previous year in which the transaction took place at the beginning of that previous year, and then the current year and end of the current year we are required to prepare consolidated financial statements for that we need to prepare the consolidated journal entries. If you look at this graphically, the cost of the asset is 23 million and accumulated depreciation is 7 million given rise to a carrying value of 16 million. This asset was sold by the subsidiary with a gain of 4 million, where the parent bought it and recorded it as 20 million. So the 20 million includes the gain that the subsidiary made, which is 4 million. And the date of acquisition of this asset by the parent for the parent, its acquisition, new acquisition, and the accumulated depreciation is zero. If you look at from the perspective of journal entries recorded by individual entities. The subsidiary prepared the asset for sale by debiting accumulated depreciation and crediting measure 23 and received cash of 20 
million and made a gain of 4 million but that gain was made in the previous period therefore from when we are in the current period that gain is recorded in the opening retained profits the parent received this asset and recorded the asset at 20 million and paying cash of 20 million when we combine these two transactions we come up with a combined general journal summary cancelling off cash debit accumulated depreciation 7 and credit machinery 3 and credit opening retail profits of 4 what it means here is that when we combine the entries the one entity made a profit of four in the previous period and the other entity has recorded that profit as part of the overvaluation which is four debit of seven less credit of three we need to reverse this general journal summary in the consolidation because this arose due to the transaction that took place between the subsidiary and the parent which becomes an invalid transaction because it's an intra-group transaction so to reverse this or to eliminate this transaction our first journal entry consolidation journal entry is we debit opening rate and profits of four and debit machinery of three and credit accumulated depreciation of seven the reason we credit accumulated depreciation of seven is because we are putting back the original value of accumulated depreciation the original cost of the machinery was 23 and it was acquired for 20 when the carrying value was 16 to make the original cost to bring back the original cost from 20 to 23 we need to debit machinery 3 so our first journal entry is debit opening rate in profits 4 debit machinery cost 3 and credit accumulated depreciation 7 if we take the debit 3 and credit 7 the net effect of that is the overvaluation of the machinery which is 4 when we write this consolidation journal entry because we are now decreasing opening retained profits the income taxes relating to the previous period also decrease but that decrease in income taxes because it is in previous period we need to record it in opening retained profits so 4 into 30 percent is 1.2 and that decrease is a credit 1.2 because we decrease the asset value, the net effect is 4, 4 million decrease in the asset value. The expected cash flows will also decrease. Because the expected cash flows will decrease from this asset, there will be a tax saving arising from this asset. 30% of 4 is 1.2 that becomes a deferred tax asset the tax saving 
So our second entry is for the tax impact is debit deferred tax asset 1.2 and credit open integrated profits 1.2. Given that in the first journal entry, we decrease the overvaluation of the machinery and two years have passed since the transaction has taken place. There's a previous year and the current year. So 4 million is the overvaluation that we have reversed and 10% is the depreciation relating to the asset and 10% of 4 million is 0.4 and we need to decrease the depreciation expense in the current year, 0 0.4. And also in the previous year, which we debit to opening retail profits, 0 0.4. For the two years, accumulated depreciation becomes 0 0.8. Therefore, our journal entry, consolidation journal entry, to reverse excess depreciation is debit accumulated depreciation 0 0.8, credit depreciation expense 0 0.4, and credit opening rate profits 0 0.4. Our fourth journal entry is the tax impact due to reversal of excess depreciation. Due to including the third consolidation journal entry that decreases expenses, depreciation expense, when we decrease depreciation expense, the profit increase, as a result, the income tax expense increase. We debit income tax expense as 0.4 into 30%. That's 0 0.12. Similarly, for the depreciation expense included in opening retail profits of 0 0.4, the excess depreciation expense that was credited will give rise to income tax expenses in the previous period and we debit opening retail profits 0 0.4 into 30% 0 0.12 as it has been used for two years. Because the asset has been used for two years, asset value has decreased and as a result, the deferred tax asset or the tax saving arising into the future also has decreased by two years. 0 0.8 is the decrease in the asset value which is short in the accumulated depreciation in the third journal entry. So the default tax asset is 0 0.8 into 30%, 0 0.24. So our fourth journal entry is for the tax impact due to reversal of excess depreciation, debit opening retail profits, 0 0.12, credit income tax expense, So our fourth journal entry, tax impact due to reversal of excess depreciation, debit opening rate in profits, 0 0.12, debit income tax expense, 0 0.12, credit deferred tax asset, 0 0.24. So there are four sets of journal entries when it's about depreciable non-current assets intra-group transaction. So the four consolidation entries are the first one, reversal of unrealized profit and overvaluation of machinery in the economic entity. Second is the tax impact on the reversal of unrealized profits of the previous period and the overvaluation of the machinery. Third, reversal of excess depreciation in the group due to business combination. 
the fourth tax impact due to reversal of excess depreciation.